I'm just judging by the victory mathematicians over here trying to say, who got it first? I got it first. You all copy off me. You... Let's give it a go, shall we? Um, what is the answer, by the way? It's one of X. Okay, which, by the way, if you've already got there, right, you're like, fantastic, I have a proof. Your next question is, like, there's, some, there's some weird stuff going on here. Okay? For instance, this exists for only a, set, a certain set of values. It doesn't exist everywhere. What's the domain of log x? Okay, uh, because you know, obviously, like, what what is a log? You know, when I say log base two of thirty-two, the answer, of course, is five. Um, but what that's kind of asking is, um, how long does if my growth rate is two, how long does it take me to grow up to thirty-two? The answer is it takes me five lots of, of that, right? Um, now. That's a time. So if I gave you log base two of, let's do something like say a 16, okay? What's the answer? This is, four. This is minus four because, again, you've got a growth rate, but what you've got is smaller than what you started with. So it's like how long ago was I this small? Was I a 16th the size of a, the, what I am now? And the answer is, well, for what, four years, four months, whatever, right? Um, before what I am now. Okay. But obviously if you ask this question, I don't know, whatever number you like. Okay. What's that saying? How long does two take to grow into, uh, hold on, okay, so it's smaller, right? How long, does, how long ago was I minus three? And the answer is I was never minus three. Like I, I was small, I might, have been, I might have been really small, but I was never negative, okay? Which is why when you take this graph, it only exists for positive x. Okay, great. Well, it, the derivative, where does that exist? Not a rhetorical question. Where does 1 over x exist? It, it exists for all real values of x but 0. Right? Okay, so you kind of, hmm. As a mathematician, not as not as someone who's trying to sit a test later on and realize the no. But as a mathematician, you should ask that question. What? Why is that? Let's let it sit for a little while. Now, the question for the rest of you is, how do we get there? Okay. Now, there's kind of a um, there's kind of a short way and a slightly longer way that I'm going to show you. I'll take you the longer way because I think it, it's a little clearer. Okay. So I'm going to go back to this. Okay. This is the definition of the natural log of x. Okay. So let's take something like Oh, I don't know. Why? That's an original name for a function. I'm pretty sure if functions have ever been called y before. Let's go with that. Now, based on what log means, okay, can we rewrite this in index form? How would you rewrite this without any logs in it? E to the power of y. E to the power of y. So the bases are the same. Is equal to, well, there's only one number left, right? Now, by the way, the fact that I said that, and I said, well, why don't we, okay? There's a reason why I made that step. It wasn't just random. Why did I go in this particular direction? Any takers? Okay, right. Now, let me take another step back, right? Remember I said, when you know something about this, right, that tells you something about this. Okay, so if I'm trying to solve a problem with this, it's in my interest to go back to something that I know more things about. So much of maths is like that. Right? Like completing the square or um, you know, when you're doing <laughs> limits. It's all about taking a problem you don't know and then sort of shoving it and massaging it into a shape that you can actually work with. Okay? So I'm here now. Now what can I do? You can take the shortcut, which I will show in a second, um, or you can take a sort of longer path. Now, we're differentiating, we're used to differentiating with respect to x. Okay? So I think that's a fine way to go. Okay? There's the differential operator. Let's whack it on both sides. Now the first thing that's, that's good about this is that um, this right hand side, okay, I kind of know what that is, so I'm making some progress here, right? So the right hand side obviously is equal to one. Yes, we're still awake. Good job. Period six on a Monday. The left hand side, what problem does it present to you? There's no x. No x's. That's still a function. You may ask to differentiate with respect to x. But it's not with respect to x, so what can you do? 
Now, there's two letters there, right? There's an E and there's a Y. So what is the left-hand side res with respect to? Is it with respect to E or is it with respect to Y? Which one? I'm going to ask you lots of questions you're like, well, what is the answer? I, I, won't, I won't make this similar to, yeah, and, or, or you may not even have heard the question. It's respect to, with respect to Y because um, E is not actually, it's not a variable, so you can't be with respect to it, really. Okay? So for instance, I couldn't differentiate with respect to E because it's just a number. Let's differentiate with respect to five, everybody. Like, what does that even mean? Okay? With respect to means something's changing, so it must be variable. Okay. So being that it's with respect to y, let's differentiate it with respect to y. How do I do it? Okay. How do I do it without changing what's on the left-hand side? Um, you pull this trick. Now, you've been doing this for years, right? You remember when you got something like, like this? Okay. You're like, what do I do with that? I know what to do with fractions. You put them on a common denominator. But these guys are these guys are surds. Surds they like playing with each other. They're really they're antisocial, right? So what can you do? You have to do something to these fractions so they can mix. What, what is it? You have to rationalize. Now, how do we rationalize? If I wanted to rationalize this first fraction, what would I do to it? I'm, I'm going to multiply by, and it has a name. What's it called? The conjugate, right? You should be so sick of conjugates from last term, right? Okay, so you multiply by the conjugate, but you can't just you can't just decide I want to multiply by things. You've got to divide as well, so no changes actually happen. Okay, we're all good so far, yeah. So I've done the same thing down here. Now I know it's a little weird because it's not a number; it's a differential operator. But you can still multiply and divide by it just the same. Okay. Now, how has it made things better? What should I do here? Now. You know, this means differentiate, right? But there's a reason it's written as a fraction. Because differentiation is about, you know, rise over run and that kind of thing. So being that it's a fraction, whoops, hold on, what did I do? Yeah, no, that's right. I can swap the numerators around because multiplication is, oh, what's it called? Is it commutative or is it associative? This is, this is year seven. The A times B is the same as B times A. Right? So I can swap them around, no problems. So now here, what do I do? Here, this part means differentiate with respect to y. Okay. So let me just make that a little more obvious. Chuck this guy out the front. Multiply by this. Okay. Now I can work with this. Right. So let's get rid of the thirds. I've got dy on dx at the left. That's convenient. Isn't it? What's the dy of in the y? Differentiate with respect to y, you just get the same thing back. Okay. So I'm going to divide because now that's what I want the subject to be. That's correct. That's fine. But I want everything in terms of x's. You know, I introduced y. There was no y in the beginning, so I should get rid of it. Thankfully, I know exactly what in the y is. It's right. So there's one last y that I need to get rid of, and that one. Okay. So let's separate it from the differential, and I'm home. Okay. Make sense? All right. That's not too hard. Let's just very, very quickly try out a couple of examples. Okay. Um, because really, where it gets interesting is where you start to mix in with chain rule. Okay. So if you were to do this. What would that be equal to? Hmm. Who thinks that's right? Anyone? Hands up straight. Hands up straight. Commit to it. Come on. Don't, don't be like... Is it, is it right or not? Yes. Okay. All right. Fine. Now, therefore... How can it be that two pretty different looking functions can have
have the same derivative? Don't answer. I want you to think about it. Can you explain why? Does anyone, without actually saying it, does anyone re reckon they can explain why? Okay, yeah, keep it in your head. I'll come over and touch you in a second. Uh, that's your homework. If, you, if you're one of those people who are like, yep, yeah, I'm sure, okay? Your homework is to tell me why two completely different functions have the same derivative. If you didn't put your hand up, be like, ah, I'm not convinced. Your homework is to convince yourself, because it is right. The question is why. 